Outside of the Marine Master lineup, uh, it's really my favorite loom application on, on any watch. Uh, it just looks so cool. Hey guys, it's Alex with Hammond Watch. Uh, I'm here today with my second gen orange monster. It's the SRP309. And uh, it's one of my favorite watches from Seiko. Uh, the run on these was very short lived, which is unfortunate because it offered tremendous value and it was a very unique design. Um, the market on these is a little bit screwy now, and uh, I'm kind of happy that we've got some homage watches coming out to, to really alleviate some of that you know I think that the it's gotten a little bit out of hand as far as what people are asking for these but uh, if you keep an eye out there's still deals to be had uh, one of my favorite things about the watch is its sizing uh, like a lot of Seiko divers it feels kind of chunky and has a really strong wrist presence uh, while at the same time not overpowering your wrist uh, the case size is like 42 or sorry 42.4 42.5 millimeters. Uh, the case itself sticks out just a tiny bit from the, the bezel atop. Uh, you've got a nice 12.8 millimeter thickness. Uh, and then your lug to lug on these is about 47 and three quarters. Um, love this seven millimeter crown. Uh, the knurling on it is phenomenal. Operating it really is a pleasure. Uh, very much in the same vein of like a modern day samurai. Uh, your lug width is 20 millimeters, uh, but the bracelet actually flares out to about 23 after the lugs, uh, tapering back down to 20, uh, and it's got kind of these weird step downs. Like there's not a super smooth transition. You can see it there. And then on the other side where the links just drop down to about 17 and three quarters, uh, and then back up to 19.8 for the clasp. Uh, you'll notice it is just a little bit smaller than these links. Um, fold over, two button deployant, uh, cheap pressed metal, um, but the overall feel of these uh, links is very nice. Uh, they drape over your wrist very well, they're just single piece, they're, they're not overly complicated, uh, just a nice tough kind of robust feeling bracelet, uh, but it does have a little bit of that cheap kind of Seiko uh, bracelet rattle, but uh, for some reason I, I tend to forgive it. Uh, the back of the watch, uh, very just simple, basic specifications. You get the Seiko Tsunami. Uh, so really just kind of what you've come to expect from Seiko. What made the Orange Monster or the Monster watches in general so popular was just the design language they used. You know, Seiko really created something that, that stood on its own. It didn't look like anything else. Uh, it was both uh, aggressive and playful. Um, the, the bezel itself having these deep grooves that follow down into the case it is super fun. Uh, I love the shroud protecting the, the crown as well as covering up uh, the, the north and south of the bezel itself. Um, your loom pip has a really nice frame to it as it's set in. Uh, and then obviously the kind of the most defining feature of the watch are, are the shark teeth loom plots uh, that play with the light really well and just offer some supreme legibility, you know, especially in low light situations. The application of, of Lumabrite on these watches is incredible. Uh, I love the handset, which you can find in many different kind of modern day Seiko watches. Uh, but the shark tooth pattern, it kind of died a, a while ago. And it's something that I think is really just missing from the, the newer iterations uh, of all the monsters, the, the orange monster, and really just this whole lineup of second gen uh, is easily my favorite. Behind the hard legs crystal, you'll notice that the dial uh, notes the movement being used in these. It's the 4R36. Uh, that's a hacking and hand winding automatic movement. Uh, it operates at tolerances of uh, plus 45 to minus 35. Uh, this one's fresh off of service, so we're running at, at minus 4. Uh, but in general, I, I think the 4R movements, you're kind of safe in, in assuming you're going to get somewhere in the, the plus or minus 15 second range. Um, while we're in tight, I'll, I'll go ahead and just step back to the crown and you can get a better look at, at that gripping and knurling. Um, 
very sharp, super nice. Uh, also, didn't mention earlier, uh, drill lug holes for easy strap changes. Uh, although it's a little bit tricky with straps. You know, I have a hard time. Uh, I don't think 20 millimeter kind of straight straps look very nice on this. Uh, if you get them, uh, I get something flared out. Uh, luckily, Seiko makes a, a flared strap, and if you're not wanting to pay that type of money, uh, you can go to Amazon, and there's a company called Mod uh, that makes flared out Seiko style straps. Uh, I really like the quality, and uh, I'll put a link in the description below in case you guys want to have a look. So here's the watch on my seven and a half to seven and three quarter inch wrist. Uh, as you can see, it's just again just not too big, but definitely chunky. A uh, ton of presence, a ton of character, and it's very playful and fun without being too childish or kitschy. You know, one of my least popular videos is on the Great White. You know, I wasn't a huge fan of the fin on the second hand and the wave dial with the shark fin. I just felt like it was trying a little bit too hard. Uh, this is really more kind of that, that heyday of Seiko where they really hit all the perfect notes. You know, you can wear this watch and still feel serious, but at the same time, it's a fantastic kind of lighthearted summer piece as well. So if you've ever gone to look for these, you've probably noticed the, the really inflated prices. And it, it's a bit of a mixed bag. You know, the, the watch market and, and buyers really dictate the prices of watches. So if people are gonna pay seven, eight hundred dollars for a watch, that's what it's worth. You know, even if that's above what they sold for originally, you know, this used to be a watch you could pick up for under 200 bucks. You know, it, very much in the same vein of an SKX where, you know, it was an incredible value and an original design and you got everything you could want out of a watch for the price. And then as soon as it gets discontinued, the price kind of creeps up and it all of a sudden starts to look a lot less attractive, uh, especially as more and more brands are coming out and, and things are getting a lot more competitive in the watch market and, and you're able to pick up watches that are very feature rich. You know, you start drifting into the seven, $800 range and, and there's a whole lot of competitors that I think offer better value than this. Uh, that said, uh, I love this design and it's really tricky to replace it with something else. Uh, there are now some uh, definite kind of modern day options or, or interpretations. Uh, I know that I, I think it's uh, Sharky makes uh, an homage to this. It's like 170 bucks. Uh, so kind of right on par with what you paid for originally. You know, you get sapphire crystal. Uh, the bezel isn't quite as nice. You know, the, the loom pip doesn't really uh, look all that great, but in general, you get the same feel uh, and the same movement for a, a fraction of what these run for now. Um, when you look around, I mean, these really, they sell, you'll see them for all sorts of crazy prices, but they tend to sell uh, in that like four to $700 range, kind of depending. If you get one that's new old stock, obviously, you know, it, it, that's a different story, but uh, I bought this one for 200 bucks. Um, long after they were discontinued. Uh, it needed a service, which cost me about uh, 150 bucks, so I'm 350 into it. You know, a, a pretty good deal by today's standards. And look, I bought and sold a, a half dozen of these. If you keep an eye out on eBay and stuff, you'll eventually find one. You know, it, it may need a new bezel, it may not have a bracelet, but you can find a really good deal. Uh, and by the time you get it all kind of back in its original pristine condition, uh, you're gonna be well under that, that $500 mark. So it, it's still possible, to, don't worry. Also, Mark at, at Long Island Watch just released uh, his interpretation of the monster. Now, it's not the shark tooth second generation. He did more the first gen, uh, where these indices are capped off or squared off, and there's numbers uh, going around the dial. Um, that watch originally was a 7S, uh, it, it didn't have any hacking or hand winding. Uh, he has since upgraded that with, with the 4R or the NH movement. He also put a Sapphire in where the original had Harlex. And, and I think it's really cool because he took a watch that's less desirable than this kind of second gen series and really made it an attractive option. Uh, he didn't do an orange dial, uh, which I hope he eventually does do. Um, but there, there are options out there. If you like this, this design, uh, you can find a way to pick one up for a, a reasonable price. You know, it, it still happens. Don't don't get discouraged. 
Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little kind of walkthrough with the watch. Uh, if you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It, it really helps in YouTube's algorithm. Uh, also, consider subscribing. Uh, I mean, I put out watch content about two times a week at a minimum, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. What?